Hi there, Leonard Parker here. In this video, I'm going to go over how to set up a remarketing pixel uh, for your Google Ads campaign. Now, if you're not already using remarketing, uh, it's highly recommended, uh, especially uh, for your non-emergency services. In marketing, we have a rule of seven where a prospective customer needs to see your brand at least seven times before making a buying decision. And with the saturation of marketing, whether that's email marketing, uh, stuff we get in the mail, Facebook ads, Google ads, uh, that number might be even higher now these days. So remarketing is pretty much a way you can automate this rule of seven where someone is constantly seeing your brand and you're staying top of mind. Now, obviously, if you also provide emergency services, this may not be as relevant, but you know, in addition to those emergency services, if you offer anything else that isn't such a pain in the neck problem, that maybe your prospective customer might have some time to make a buying decision, then your marketing is a great way to, uh, to target them. Now for this video, I'm going to focus on Google ads. Uh, I'll focus on setting up remarketing for Facebook ads in a separate video. But to get started, um, if you uh, are, you should already have access to your Google ads account. Um, you're basically going to go to, I'm going to start from the beginning here. So let's exit this. And then you're going to go to tools and settings. You're going to go to audience manager within your AdWords account. And you should land on a, on a screen like this. And then from there, you're going to hit the blue button here. And for the most part, you're going to be targeting website visitors. Um, you know, there might be a case, some of you out there might have an app for your restoration business, but really you want to target website visitors. And, uh, I'm just going to create this test audience. Okay. And then visitors of the of a page, that's usually going to be your most um, commonly used type of audience. Um, and you pretty much create that list and then you create rules based on who would be added to your remarketing audience. So uh, let's just say we have a website called testrestoration.com. So really what this is going to do, um, any URL on my uh, fake website, testrestoration.com, as long as it has this in it, um, that person, that site visitor is going to be added to my remarketing audience. Um, if there's a specific uh, URL, so let's just say we offer carpet cleaning. So you'll add that. So you only, let's say you only want to remarket to carpet car carpet cleaning prospective customers, then you will only put that URL in there. Now, let's say you had uh, multiple URLs. So maybe you had uh, carpet cleaning, that's your main services page, uh, but you also um, had another page, maybe a blog article that talks about some best practices for carpet cleaning. So in that case, you would add something like this, testrestoration.com. Test then your blog and then tips for carpet cleaning so there's a lot you can do there um, so just kind of think about your strategy think about the different pages on your website and make sure that your logic here makes sense and you can see here there's like different and statements and or statements so just make sure it makes sense and it um you know you're actually you're accurately capturing the audience that you want to target to okay and so after you do that, uh, pre-fill list with people from the past 30 days. Um, so you can just, you can actually retroactively uh, target people uh, for the previous 30 days. So let's just say um, you want to kind of get a jump start on your list or you can start with an empty list. Um, so I actually usually use this. Um, you know, it's a great way to jump start and start filling out your list. But, you know, you always have the option to start with an empty list. So, you know, I guess let's say if you just made some significant changes to the page that you're targeting, that might be a good reason to start with an empty list. 
So you actually can target people up to 540 days. So I believe that's about a year and a half. I, in my experience, haven't found a reason to target people that long. Um, usually it's going to be between 30 and 90 days. Um, and maybe even shorter. If you're looking at emergency services, maybe you keep that to one or two weeks. But, um, you know, typically I would just do 90 days. But, you know, your customer, whoever your demographic is, you know, whatever their typical buying cycle is, that's kind of the, 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 the day range that you want to use there. So I'll just put in 90 days here. And then just add in an audience description. So let's just say for this one, this is a carpet cleaning. Then create your audience. Okay. So it's populating. So it does take some time to populate. Uh, so once you have that, then you're going to go over to Google Tag Manager. So there's actually um, several ways you can add the actual remarketing uh, uh, code and pixel to your website. Uh, I find that using Google's Tag Manager is the most uh, efficient way, most straightforward way. Um, doesn't If you are using WordPress, it doesn't really require that you have a developer to help you with this. Uh, but you go ahead and create the, the audience and then you're going to go over here to Google Tag Manager. Now, Google Tag Manager is a, a tool by Google free tool. It allows you to kind of better organize all of your different pixels and tracking codes into you know, different containers. So a lot more organized than just adding the scripts manually. Uh, so. I created an account uh, already, uh, just call it test, but let's kind of just go back here to the beginning. So we actually don't want to be here. So we just create an account. So when you go to tagmanager.google.com, you'll be on that page that we just saw. So um, I'll just use test US, well, of course, if you're in another country. Uh, just pick whatever country you're targeting. Um, shared data, anonymous, anonymous, I can't talk with Google and others. Um, so, yeah, I'll just check the box. No biggie there. Um, then put in your website. So our website is testrestoration.com. Then target platform. Um, more cases are not going to be web. Click create. Uh, you redo the terms of service. Um, I already read these a few times, so I'll say yes. Okay. So this is the actual code. So let's say if you're not on a WordPress website, um, you actually add this manually to your, your website, uh, focusing on the instructions that they provided here. So if you're not familiar how to do this, you know, I suggest that you... Um, you know, contact your site developer, whoever manages the code for your website to do this. Um, otherwise, you can mess it up and not uh, install it correctly. So we're just going to hit OK. And then from there, you're going to create a tag now that you have this uh, container. So hit new tag. Um, so this is our AdWords tag. AdWords test. Tag configuration. So tag type, um, we're just using for uh, Google Ads remarketing. Okay. And I usually just leave all of this on um, the default. Um, so no, uh, just keep it simple for the video. Choose a trigger. So all pages, okay, and then hit save. Oh, wow, I forgot to add that. Yep, so your conversion ID. So since we are just creating a test campaign, I'm not sure if we'll have a conversion ID, but you can actually click through here to, um, to Google's uh, page on this. And it'll show you how to grab that conversion ID.
but yes, I um, did forget to fill that out. You will need that to uh, save your remarketing pixel here in Google Tag Manager. So um, let's just go do an example for an existing account. So go to Audience Manager, Audience Sources, Audience Sources. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so another benefit of using Google Tag Manager, it's another Google product, so everything is connected uh, with AdWords. So uh, went to Audience Sources back here on the Audience Manager page and then go to Setup Tag. Okay. And then... Um, So yeah, I just say for to keep things simple, let's select the first option, save and continue. Okay. And then again, let's uh, leverage the, the integration. So let's use Google Tag Manager. And then this is where you're gonna get your conversion ID. And so now we have something to fill in here. Okay. And then you're gonna hit save. Okay, so now you have this AdWords test uh, remarketing pixel within your Google Tag Manager. So now that we've done that, uh, just make sure that you hit submit. And I always just put um, something here. So V1 AdWords remarketing. Okay. And this is a very simple implementation of the Google, um, the AdWords remarketing pixel, you know, depending on the goals of your campaign, uh, you might want to add some layers of complexity here, but this is really kind of just the, whoever's watching to understand how to, you know, simply add the remarketing pixel from AdWords to your website. Okay. So we're all good there. Okay. So now, um, we're going to add the Google Tag Manager code to our website. So quick summary so far. So we first created the remarketing audience in AdWords. Uh, so that's what we created over here with the test. Then we uh, set up Google Tag Manager and we created a container and we created a tag for AdWords remarketing. And now the final step is to actually add the Google Tag Manager to our website. So like I said, uh, WordPress is probably, um, you know, if you're not using WordPress and if it's an option, uh, WordPress in my experience is the best for SEO. Um, it's not the perfect uh, website platform, but I would say it's the best from what I've seen. So um, once you're in WordPress, uh, you're going to go to the plugins menu on the back end of your site. So just log in, then go to plugins. Um, the plugin that I use is called Google Tag Manager for, for WordPress. To find it, just type in GTM here in the plugin search bar. And the reason I like this, of course, it has uh, some really good reviews. And the plugin developer, they keep it updated frequently. So you can see as of the recording of this video, they last minute update in 10 hours and just a general rule of thumb uh, when you're adding plugins if you do have a wordpress website and you're adding new plugins or considering adding new plugins uh, you want to make sure that the, the developer is updating uh, the plugin regularly uh, so i usually don't go any further than three months so this guy um, who last updated it 11 months ago yeah, I might not, that might, might, might not be a good addition to my website because it could have um, security vulnerabilities. It's not probably compatible with WordPress. And so, um, yeah, it's just best to stick with plugins that stay updated. Um, that way you can avoid some issues down the road. So uh, Google Tag Manager for WordPress. So it's actually already added on my website. Uh, so I'll actually just go in there. So you'll be able to find it. Let's move this out the way. Uh, you'll be able to find it. Uh, where is my settings? 
under the settings menu. So you should see something like Google Tag Manager. Okay, and once you're there, uh, the, the screen is pretty simple. So uh, you just need to add your Google Tag Manager ID. Uh, so going back to Google Tag Manager, admin, okay, and then uh, right here is your Google Tag Manager ID. So go to the admin tab and then go right here to get your ID. Copy and paste that over here. So I'm not going to change this because I'm actually using it. Um, but yeah, just put in that ID here in this field. And then I just use this as a default footer of the page. Um, I haven't had any issues with it uh, because if you use one of these other options, then it's going to cause you to have to uh, make changes to your website template. And unless you have access to a developer or you are able to make changes to the code yourself, uh, you know, you don't want to cause any issues there. So I just use footer of the page and they hit save changes. And that's pretty much it. Now, to make sure that your your um, your tag manager is installed, all you would do is go to that site. And I use a Chrome extension called Ghostery. And don't worry, I'll leave links to all of these tools um, in the video description. I use a, a plugin called Ghostery. Uh, they have a they have a free option. You can actually go to the website and see what's installed there. So going back to uh, the website I was looking at. Um, actually, let's go to the front end. Let's just wait for that. Let's see what's installed. So you can see there, uh, really what you're looking for here is that the Google Tag Manager is installed. So it's there, it's picking up. So that's really all we need to, uh, to confirm. So I know this video is a bit longer than my usual how-tos, but if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out. Again, I'll leave the links to all the tools I use in the video description. But make sure to stay tuned for the next video where we pretty much are going to follow the same process, but uh, do this for Facebook ad remarketing. Thanks. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe. Talk to you later.